Johnson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukenus certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. The 2022 World Cycle Cross Championship kicked off in the deep sand of Markelo in Holland. The Dutch, of course, were up to the usual tricks. They are just so good at it. Etienne Bax teamed up with Andre Chermak this time. He was determined to win the championship with his Czech passenger. And he performed extremely well in Markelo. They were brilliant together and kick-started the season in fantastic form. Then it was off to the Czech Republic, Lockett. Different sort of going, different sort of terrain, and a different sort of result. Gert van Verven, Ben van der Bogart did a great job in Lockett. Bax was strong as well. Velman too put a spanner in the works. In fact, quite a big spanner. Deep sound of Lommel, where Jason van Dala gave us a display of his amazing backflip. Lots of entertainment and lots of drama. Lommel was again another place where Bax was strong. The Prunier boys from France found it tough. Lots of the crews struggled in this deep sand, but not Marvin van Lukener and Robbie Bax. Champagne flowed and everyone was preparing themselves for the next race. And that was over in Estonia, close to the Russian border in Langa. Once again, a very different sort of course, but Etienne Bax going so very strongly here, as indeed was local man Kurt Varick. Three massive crashes involving Julian Bellman, Gert Van Verven and Brett Wilkinson. Actually, everyone walked away with the exception of Julian Veldman, who was taken away with broken ribs, punctured lung, and will not ride for the rest of the season. But Kuhn Hermans was strong. Varick was strong. And the amazing thing was that Etienne Bax was deemed to have passed on a flag, and at the end of the day, the stewards demoted him to 10th place. Now, he's got to bring that deficit here to the amazing Czech Republic and Kaplica. Wonderful architecture. We're very close to the Austrian border, and the buildings here say it all. It is absolutely magnificent. We've been out and about looking around the town. The track is even better. It's an incredible circuit, but what a pretty, pretty part of the Czech Republic is South Bohemia. Meanwhile, out at the track, which has never been used for a GP before, the riders had had a good look at it. Looking around the circuit, Etienne Bax had come here with one focus in mind to get those points back. <laughs> he looked pretty relaxed, but just one thing on his mind, and he had a brand new bike to do the business on. This will be a key weekend for sure, that's, that's true. Um, yeah, we, we, we lost our fight against the protest uh, this week. Actually, only two days ago, I, I got the result from this. So um, we are a little bit disappointed in that way. And uh, we were in uh, two points in front, and now we're 16 points behind. So. It means we, we need to keep our head down and, and focus on, on winning races, you know. This is the only thing that we can do and um, I think we have all chance on the world title. It's nothing is lost, but just we need to work more hard than normally. This is only one more, you know, but the setback is, is, is always difficult, you know, uh, for sure, because I think that it was not right what they did to me, the protest, and I will never change my mind about this. So it, it, it's hard, but, you know, we need to deal with this. And uh, like I say, 16 points, is, it's, it's, it, can be, it can be back in, in one heat. So uh, we need to keep focusing on our material and our riding. And uh, if we keep winning races like we did already uh, for, for a good part in the season, it will be no problem. So uh, all the pressure is on Varek at the moment. And I think uh, he never have been in this situation, riding red plate, sending in the lead of the championship. So I think uh, all focus, of, he has the biggest pressure for this weekend. We try to still reach that victory. And I think I, uh, we, we talk with the guys also in this week, you know, it's still an open book. We still, everything can happen. And uh, uh, some people say, oh, now you lose the chance. But no, actually we are, we're quite close. And uh, I think we're going to take it back. And you can see why he's the reigning champion, can't you? He is a consummate professional, an absolutely class act. Kurt Varick, though, he was feeling the stress just a little bit. We had a brief chat. 
Kurt Varek, you come here to Kaplice in the Czech Republic, leading the World Championship by 16 points. How does it feel to have the red plate? Amazing. Very, very good feeling. Uh, no, maybe a little bit also making stress, or not much. We try to do everything uh, very good, mechanic working very good, and everybody try to do maximum. From two guys at the top of their game to two new ones starting out. Latvia has a proud history of sidecar cross world champions. It just is the most amazing country. And the latest two sensations to come out of Latvia are identical twins, Daniel and Bruno Lielbardis. When I first heard about them, I couldn't wait to see them in action. And they are going to be in action here this weekend. First of all, Daniel, how excited are you to be racing GPs? Yeah, we are really excited in the first GP, so it will be fun. You're leading the Latvian Championship and by virtue of going to Germany, you could well lose it. But Germany is obviously very important. Yeah, we think that we'll lose it because Rupex will uh, get many points, so we will, he will win the, G, no, the Latvian Championship. Bruno, when did your career start? I don't know how I'm going to tell you two apart. You know, you really are identical. When did your career start? At what age? Uh, we started riding sidecars at age uh, six. Uh, but uh, before sidecars, we were riding quads. Uh, we started riding quads at uh, four years old. And yeah, when we turned six, Casper uh, Stupels helped us uh, to start riding the sidecar. How important has it been to have someone of his experience helping you and giving you the the short track, if you like. Uh, yeah, he's really helped us with the sponsors uh, and with the riding. If he sees that we are making a mistake, he tells us uh, to do something better. And yeah, I've read some incredible results. Your achievements at such a young age have been amazing, and you seem to have no fear. You'll take on the world. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can do that. <laughs> Well, I hope so too. I can't wait. Have you had a quick look at the track out there? Yeah, we already locked it out and it's, I think it's a good track and it will be fun. Well, I hope so too. Um, when did you start your training? Was it in Holland with the Kids and Sidecars program? Uh, yeah, we bought our first sidecar in Holland and then we did a few laps uh, with the sidecar and then we uh, did a few trainings with Kasper Stupels and yeah, uh, he te teached us the, all, the big, all the stuff in the beginning. So we can ride. Well, if you can ride in the sand, you can ride the jumps, you can, you can ride anywhere. I am so excited about watching you two guys in action. Welcome here to the Czech Republic and uh, have a good weekend. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And if you're lucky, that fun never goes away. We're going to have a look at the track and I'm going to talk to a man who's been having fun for a long, long time. I'm here with a man who's become a legend in his own country and indeed on the world cycle cross stage. Stuart Brown needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyway. Now 50 years of age, and he won't mind me saying that, 18 British titles. I doubt that will ever, ever be matched. Stuart, you're here still fighting in the World Championship and we're here on a track at Kaplica that is something so different from everything you've ever grown through. Yeah, definitely. You know, with the... Uh... Obviously, the jumps are getting bigger, the, the competition's getting stronger, you know, and, and I remember when I was the youngest rider on the start line, and now I'm the oldest. So it's progressed and moved on, you know. In your career, when you started, when, when you... Let's have a look at the edge of the track. When you started, circuits were not like this, particularly in the UK. They were grassy, weren't they? And yeah. Fields? Yeah, that's right. It was more just um, who could go fastest into a corner and exit the corner the fastest and, and the obstacles wasn't as big, you know, and the whoops and the jumps and everything. So yeah, we've got to move on with the times, the tracks change, um, and every, every country has a different idea of a track, you know, when you ride abroad or ride in England, you know, so. You're with Josh Chamberlain, you've been on and off with Josh, but he's a reliable, you're a good pair, and I think you've gravitated back together for that reason, haven't you, really? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Josh, for me, is, you know, Probably one of the best, well, he's the best passenger I've had. Uh, strongest, the most mentality, you know, strong in, in the brain. And he's, um, he's there and he wants to do a good job everywhere we go, 100%.
What keeps you going over all these seasons? What drives you on? Because like everybody else, you've got to work for a living, you've got to earn your money, and I guess you're spending most of it doing this sport. Yeah, that's it. I mean, we, we go to work and all day at work, you, you're thinking about what you're going to do in the evening on the bike or you've got to do on the truck or you've got to do some modification somewhere. And then also you've got to try and keep fit in between that as well. And then between driving the, the sidecar, you become a truck driver because you've got to drive to and from the events and then you're getting home and you, you're going straight to work the following day, you know, and it's just, it's just your life. It's just what we do and um, the motivation, I'm not really sure. <laughs> we just, it's just what all we know. Yeah, but it's not just because it's a habit, is it? Because I know that there comes a point in your career when you think, you know, I don't know why I'm doing this, but that you've never hit that threshold. You're still going. No. You're driven. Aren't yeah, you? yeah. I mean, I'll be honest with you. The more, the more and more, the the longer the events are away, the more you're thinking, well, oh, it's, it's a long drive that is to ride around a, a track, you know, uh, and then basically punish yourself for two days. <laughs> and, and if you get a good result, it's, 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 you know, it's all a lottery really, but obviously aim to get a good result, but it's impossible to get a good result in every race. Stuart, let's have a quick look at this track at Complete Sir. We're looking out over it now. The start goes down here, and I mean, this is a tight bend anyway. Lots of climbs. Which is the bit that you find the most tricky? To be honest with you, this is all pretty well as normal, you know, the, the track, it's around the back where the, the, the whoops are and, and the tight bit down the hill, the right hand, you know, it's just one line basically. So you, you can't push too hard, you can't pass, you've just got to basically bide your time and, and hopefully push the other rider into a mistake, not without obviously, you know, injuring anybody. You've just got to be basically a little bit forceful really. How much does the experience count in this sport? Well, yeah, I mean, no one's immune to getting hurt. Um, not necessarily your own fault, you know, it could be another rider crashing like yesterday on the start, we, we got off the start and somebody crashed and then somebody else veered right and, and took my passenger out and then we was over. So then we started from the back, so it doesn't have to necessarily be your fault, but sometimes you can just sense something's going to happen. Maybe when you're a little bit younger, you're just a little bit more naive and just keep the throttle pinned and, and you get away with it 95% of the time. But then as you get older, you just start to think, hang on a minute, you can feel something's not quite right or, you know, it's just, um, I think it's just in your makeup really, how it, how it happens. We've seen so many recent events here in the Czech Republic. When you started, and indeed when I was riding, Czech Republic was unheard of in terms of cycle cross, wasn't it? That's right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, when we tried to qualify in Czech Republic, we was, there was still wooden scaffolding and, you know, when we're driving here, it was like going to the end of the world. And now it's just more of a local event, really. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it's great to see you here. Mate, I'm full of admiration. Thanks, I really Barry. am. I, I know what it takes to do what you've done. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. Well, the team's divided into their two groups. Group A qualifying then about to get underway. And this is all about start line positions. Who's going to get the whole shot here? You saw the red paint of Varick in the middle. Hermans was very, very quick earlier on. Justin Kubin was quick and he's done it again. Justin Kubin, Dion Riemont, but Lucas Cherny. Lucas Cherny, local man on the Java, or Java as we call it here in the UK. He is absolutely flying in this. What a great start that was. So Cherny then, Lucas Cherny riding the number six, not used to that, Bastien Chopin, his French passenger, a red and white strip from those boys, very clearly identified. Oh dear me, that looks like Stuart Brown. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain must have got clouted. At the first turn, I didn't see that, I didn't see that happen. It must have got shoved up the slip road, I think, as the rest of the crew went round when we talked about that with Stuart. He didn't mention how tight it was down that left-hander, but I can tell you, it's really, really tight. Off the gate and then diving down left there, if you get it wrong. But look at this, Czerny and Bastian, Bastian Choban ahead of Justin Kubin, Dion Reitman. Then it's Kuhn Hermans and Nicola Mousset. Then it's Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas, the number five, the red plate holder. Kubin in the red strip. Kubin, Dion Reitman ahead of Hermans Mousset. And still out in front, it's Lucas Cherny. 
The air horn's going, the Czech's absolutely patriotic for Czerny, who arrived here in a huge bus. I don't know how he got it into the circuit because the lanes approaching this track are very, very narrow indeed. As Jake Brown will tell you, he scraped the back of his transporter. But look at Hermans. Hermans was quickest by five one thousandths of a second over Etienne Bax in time training. So now we've got a change at the lead. Justin Kubin has gone ahead of Lucas Czerny, the number six, red and white. So Czerny, Bassi and Chopin fighting hard. Now they've got a real bit of pressure behind. Hermans and Mousset, oh, a bit crooked over that jump. But Hermans is so quick here. Kurt Varick, Larry Kunas know they've got to stay in touch. This is about gate position for the two Grand Prix races. And it's important. The gate is narrow. We've cornered off or we've taped off five of the gate positions over to the extreme left because it's too tight into the bend. So it's a narrower start gate. Hermansen up the outside around the top. There he goes into second place. But it is still Justin Kuban and Dean Reitman out in front. Hermans Musay then challenging now. And now Varick having a look up the outside on Czerny and Bastian Chopin. And who's that following Varek? Well, it's Marco Heinzer, Marco Heinzer, Rudy Betchart, the Swiss pair with the left-hand sidecar. So they are the leading left-hand chairs at the moment. And they are up to fifth place in this qualifying race. It's going to be close and it's going to be hard. Now, look at that, into the lead, imperiously through on the right-hand side. And you have to say, with the practice time as quick as he did in time training, then Kuhn Hermans was always going to be a force to be reckoned with on this track. He seems to like it. A lot of the riders say it's a bit too tight, but Kuhn Hermans seems to be coming into his own. He's already pulled a significant gap over Kuban and Reitman there. And uh, the red-shirted boys now relegated by Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas. So they know what they've got to do. They need a good start position. For the Grand Prix tomorrow, they need two strong finishes, a 16-point lead. They've got, oh, that's the Lille Bardis boys. That's Daniel and Bruno Lille Bardis, our new young Latvian sensations, sidelined. And it looked like the rider was injured there. Kuhn Hermans, Nicola Musay, though. Over the line, fist in the air, victory for them in Group A qualifying. That's a good result. That's all they need. They will be right there on the start grid. Varick going through, the red plate proudly displayed. Gert Varick, Larry Kunos, third will be Gert van Verven and Ben van der Berger, who we didn't really see much of in that race, but they were in third. There it is confirmed then. Hermans from Varick, Gert van Verven, Justin Kuban. What a ride he and Dion Rietmon had ahead of Heinster, further down the order, Visseling Pukal, the Lille Vardis boys credited. Off the line went Hermans. Well, it's a nice track, it's uh, not easy to pass, but uh, I think for tomorrow it will be better. And uh, yeah, we did win the qualifying race, but uh, the speed was not so good as the pre qualifying. We, uh, we did have some problems uh, with the start, so uh, we did try something, but uh, yeah, it was really bad for the whole race, but uh, we still win, and that's good. Group B qualifying then, and this is where Etienne Bax needs to stamp his authority on this job and uh, get a good gate position. He knows who the big rival is already. Five second board counting down. Dave Edwards strolling across the FIM official and Bax then getting a cracker here in the qualifying race. Does he get the whole shot? Yes, he does. Yeah, he and Andre Chermak hurtle through with Van Lukena in second place pushing hard. And who's that in third? Let's have a look. See if I can get a shot at that. That's not Jason Vandala, is it? Is that Jason Vandala in third place? The 723 man? The man who did the backflip for us in Lommel? Well, we'll get a look as they come round. It looks like Vandala. Well, that was a cracking start for him. Number 723. Brilliant. The rest of the pack chasing through. And uh, a good start there as well by Stefan Fires and Edward Sunans. 
Riding number 418, Gert Gordiev got a flyer too. Ian Kaspers Stupolis. Let's see how this new chassis of Etienne Bax handles these wounds. Well, ride one, jump one. Ride one, jump one. That's the way to do it. I never mastered it, but these boys are just very, very good at it. There you have it. That's the 418 of Stefan Vyers. And uh, coming through, looked like Gert Gordiev chasing through on him. Coming through behind Brett Wilkinson as well. Well, the British crews looking strong here. But, um, well, that was Brett Wilkinson definitely. And it looked like Jake Brown as well. Here's Gordiev. Gordiev and Kasper Stupolis. The 151, very distinctive purple shirts. Right on the back now of 418 Stefan Weyer. Stefan Weyer and Edward Sunens, the Dutch Belgian combination on the Zabel VMC. Zabel two stroke, of course. Brett Wilkinson and Joe Millard through on the inside. The British crew stuffed the left hand chair in front of the number 418. And Stefan Weyer had nowhere to go. Now, Brett Wilkinson's got to keep the momentum up. This is where the left-hand chair might be tricky on those tight right-hand turns. But Wilkinson then, charging ahead. Back at the front, it's now Van Lukener. Van Lukener ahead of Bax. Van Lukener, Robbie Bax, younger brother of Etienne. And Andre Chermak, his passenger, all banged his back on the inside of that bank, but undeterred. Tough cookies, these checks, that's for sure. But Van Lukena, Marvin Van Lukena then, came here in fifth in the standings, and without Julian Veldman here, then an awful lot of work to do. He could catch up Gert Van Verven as well. So Van Lukena will need a good Czech Grand Prix here at Kaplica. Back's moving in. Oh, dear me! Nearly threw Chermak out. That was close. Rode up the back of the platform of Marvin Van Luken and Robbie Bax and almost that ended in tears. That was incredible, but hang on, we've now got Bax ahead of Van Luken. Well, quite how that happened, I don't know. That was somewhere around the back. But this qualifying race is going to be won, after all, by Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak with Marvin Van Luken having dominated the bigger part of the middle of it. Check and flag goes out, so it's Bax and Chermak. And Marvin Van Lukena and Robbie Bax clearly had a problem out of camera shot. Well, that was nearly game over for Etienne Bax, but at the end of the day, Van Lukena came home supreme. He and Robbie Bax. Gert Gordiev, Kasper Stupolis, the 151. They're coming home in quite a strong finish too. Third place for them. Confirmation then, yeah, backs from Van Luken and Gordiev. We just saw Brett Wilkinson, Joe Millard. That's good. Fourth ahead of Stefan Viers. Davy Sanders, Luke Rostang, Jake Brown there behind Viers. Well, the circuit is quite tricky, at least, yeah, to say. And uh, I think it's very important to have a good start here because if you have a bad start, you will never come to the front anymore. That I 100% uh, sure know. So uh, it's good for us, you know, we are good in the start all year already. So I think, uh, like now, also we take the whole shot. So I think we're quite confident about the start. And uh, I think if we can make a good start and uh, we have a little bit of luck on our side, we can make some very good points on Varek this weekend. Watch the World Sidecar Cross Championship live on FIMSidecarCross.com. What will you get? The package includes professional live streaming from every race through the Sidecar Cross Championship. Interviews with top riders, backstage information, and much more. Live commentary from Barry Nutley and Bradley Hicks. These guys know their stuff. Sidecar Cross Live on FIMSidecarCross.com. Straight to the races. Welcome back to the Czech Republic, Kaplica in the South Bohemia region, very close to the Austrian border. The architecture down here, absolutely spectacular. 
the mountains, the hills, the scenery, second to none. Cleanliness just abounds. The pretty little town of Kaplica, full of happy people, full of bars, full of restaurants. We absolutely loved being here. The motocross track, not too far away. The FIM governing body has a number of dedicated enthusiasts, one of them, Eddie Hurd, retiring at 80 years of age. I asked him if he had a particular career highlight. I think the development of the FIM Europe Cycle Cross and Quad Cross of Nations is one of them. Because and we've got that coming up? We've got that in two, three weeks' time in Kramani. Are you going to yeah. be with us? Yes. Good. Yeah, for the final time, yeah. And we can drink a beer together. I mean, I've never up. forgotten sidecars. And of course, we brought in the quads when quads became popular. We brought it in and combined it with world sidecars, and it works. But going back to the story, if I may, from 2010, there was a four-year mandate. Wolfgang said, we'll give you the four-year mandate. 2014, the mandate was up to renewal. Wolfgang said, we want you to do another four years. Okay. And then the, the other four years went by. We want you to do another four and years. So it goes on. So it went 12 years without a break. And they still didn't want me to stop. Wolfgang's no longer involved, but Giuseppe is, obviously, and his son. They still didn't want me to stop, but Giuseppe said, I spoke with him, he said, if, you, if that's what you want to do, we will respect your decision. You're always invited to come anywhere you like. Always. Well, we feel like get you in Because he's you. very loyal. People yeah. who are loyal to him, he's loyal back. Yeah. It's a family to him. Well, going back before pandemic, yes. WSC and Martin got it, became involved uh, yeah. with the cycle cross yeah, and, and taking it to another level. Uh, what's your view with WSC and the impact it's had? Oh, I think all the world sport needs a promoter it works sometimes it's not popular to begin with but it does need a promoter it's worked with Ustream in front with the mxgp and mx2 series um, it was when i heard about wsc and martin i thought this is good going to be good for sidecars unfortunately he signed the contract covid yeah and it really was it was a perfect very, storm. Very, very unlucky time for Martin. Yes. Perfect storm. Nobody knew that was going to happen. And he lost the first year, nothing happened. He couldn't do it. I mean, in front carried on because they had the money behind them to financially support events without spectators. They could do it. Martin couldn't do that. Without spectators, you can't run cyclocross. So he lost a year. The second year, last year, still very, very difficult. We had four events five events yeah still still, but still from caused COVID. chaos yeah. with the yeah, it did. with the calendar he also had difficulties with some of the federations organizers we've had brexit we've then had brexit that doesn't make much difference really. uh, well it, 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 well, it, it goes to the guys who travel a bit you know that's... yeah but it means for yeah. me it means a stamp in the passport <laughs> like going back yeah. to the old days it's yeah. okay it's not much difference and i feel so sorry for martin because the perfect storm hit him just as he signed the contract, yes. and which no one can predict. Well, we're looking forward to uh, a good 2023, I think. There's I a draft coming I think what I on. hear is going to be good. I'd like to think, Eddie, that now you've got loads of time on your hands, you'll come along as our guest and come to the odd one, because I don't think we're going to keep you away in. I, well, Martin has always said, whenever you want to come, let me know. On behalf of, of WSC, on behalf of everyone here, and everyone that you've ever helped along the way thanks for those sterling years of service and enjoy your retirement although i don't think there's going to be much of it well i should be bored but i, I also wish wsc and the world psycho cross championship success in the future i'm sure it will be successful next year i hope it is because it's he's been so unlucky in the last two years thank you eddie Eddie heard then, without characters like him, this sport would not run. In fact, no motorcycle sport would run without the FIM and all the enthusiasts in the local federations, the national federations indeed, who carry it forward. Eddie, enjoy your retirement. Race day then. Everybody looking forward to this. Andre Chermak in particular. He's on home soil. And the riders' presentation where they get to meet the fans, they sign autographs. The fans absolutely love it. 
This is how they line up then. Kuhn Hermans was quickest by five one thousandths of a second over Etienne Bax. Varek Van Lukena, Van Verven Gordiev. Good for him. Justin Kubin quick as well. Stefan Vyas, Marco Heinzer, Davy Sanders, and Luke Rostang running out the top ten. Lucas Cherney, local man on the Yava from Jake Brown, Tim Leffering, and further down the order, Dan Foden and Stuart Brown, 17th fastest. The last chance boys filling up the numbers at the back of the gate, the Prunier brothers there from France. Well, attention rising now, nerves, everyone doing their own ritual, preparing themselves for these two 30-minute Grand Prix races. This is the first one, two laps as well to be added on. Nobody's laughing now. This is high pressure time, 30 crews go, 16 points separate Etienne Bax from Kurt Farrick. No one knows more than Varick himself. Five seconds in. Everyone heads down two rows here. This narrow start, and away they go. It's Etienne Bax. Etienne Bax getting the flyer. The 82, he and Andre Germak charging now, but it's Van Lukener. Van Lukener who gets the whole shot here. Somebody's gone up the slip road. Somebody went left there. And who's that? Well, that looks like Tanner Riesler, the number 34. I think it might well be. Yes, it is. The Estonians, Tanner Riesler. Goodness me. So drama already. One or two caught up in that very tight turn. But who's out in front? Marvin Van Luken. And no, already Bax is there. Bax and Chermak out in front, the 82. They want that red plate back. They know what they have to do. There is the red plate on Kurt Varick's bike. He and Larry Kunas in fourth, about to jump into third. They've got to keep Bax in sight. Remember, 16 points to gap between them. They've got, let's see that new bike of Bax over the jumps here. Here it comes. Control or what? And there's Varick. There's Varick. He's looking down. Varick is looking down on the right hand side. So much so that he nearly got stuffed up the back. Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas ahead of Justin Kuban and Dion Reitman. Then you've got Kuhn Hermans, Nicola Musset in the white shirts. It's so tight here. So many solo races have been run on this track. They've had national sidecars, but never a Grand Prix. So the track, in terms of world championship, was relatively unknown to, well, all of these crews. Etienne Bax came here testing uh, earlier in the year, just to find out a bit about it. There's Kurt Varick. Kurt Varick and Larry Kunas going strongly but out in front, it's Etienne Bax, there's Kuhn Hermans closing on the back of the number seven, Justin Kuban and Dion Reitman. There's Varick. Uh, Kuban now closing on Varick and Larry Kunas. And Varick is actually leading a bit of a convoy here. If anything, he's backing the rest of these guys up because he doesn't seem to have the speed down the hills. It looks to me like he's got a problem. Larry Kunas also thinks there's a problem. He, well, there you go. Kuban has passed. Kuban, Kuban has passed. Varick, the red plate holder, is now slipping backwards. And he's on the point of slipping into the clutches of Kuhn Hermans and Nicolas Musset. They're queuing up behind him. Out in front, though, well, this is the battle. There's Varick in the middle of your picture, in the middle of that pack. Watch Hermans. He's fast along here. He's brave over the jumps. He's alongside. And is he passed? Yes, he is. He's another one going past the red plate holder, Varick. So there's definitely a problem with Kurt Varick. Etienne Bax through the picture. Marvin Van Luker, Robbie Bax through the picture, then a long, long way back. Looking back over the whoops, Justin Kuban. Justin Kuban flying behind him, Kuhn Hermans. Number three, Kuban going well. He and Dion Reitman, fantastic. They had arm pump, or rather, Justin Kuban had arm pump in practice where it, the muscles stiffened up so much he just couldn't hold on, he had to back off. And we all know about that. Anybody who's ever raced knows about arm pump. The lactic acid and the blood fills up the forearms and you get to the point where you can't hold on anymore. And you have to be holding on. Can you imagine letting go of the handlebars? That's Van Lukener just gone past out of shot, waiting now for the chasing pack. Who's it gonna be? Is it Kuban or is it a white shirt? 
it's still Justin Kuban, number seven, doing a great job. Herman's still there. Then it's Kurt van Verven, number 11, who's also gone past Kurt Varing. Gordiev is the next one. Gert Gordiev and Kaspar Stupilis, the 151 crew, are now closing on Gordiev's fellow Estonian. Now, will he do, there are no team orders, but will he do him a patriotic favor and keep off his back? I wonder, I doubt it. They might be best buddies off track, but when the race is on, the gloves are off. There's Gordiev, there's Varick, number five. Gordiev is right with him now. Gert Gordiev, Kaspar Stupilis, the multiple world sidecar champion, passenger. I add passenger. Race leader, Etienne Bax, Andre Chermak. The air horns are going over the straight for Chermak. The Czech fans, so, so enthusiastic and so loyal. And we've got, there you go, job done. Checkered flag out for Bax and Chermak. Victory in race one here in Kaplica. Waiting now for Marvin Van Lukener. Here comes Van Lukener, the blue with tail enders ahead of them. Van Lukener, second place. Who is going to claim third? Well, it's Kuhn Hermans. Kuhn Hermans, Nicolas Mousset have got the better of Justin Kuban. Up the hill for the last time, over the top, white hoarding on the left. And checkered flag awaits. That was impressive for Bax. He has pulled back some points. Bax from Van Lukener, Kuhn Hermans, Van Verven, Varing. Fifth. Well, not too shabby, but he's got to do better than that. Otherwise, he's going to lose that red plate. Marco Heinzer, Justin Kubin did slip back. Gordiev, Sanders, Brett Wilkinson, best of the British in 10th. Stuart Brown right behind him. Dan Foden. So that was a British convoy, wasn't it? Tim Leffering, Ian Cox, and Lucas Cherney on the other. Yeah, I'm satisfied. I think both we are satisfied. Uh, we make a whole shot and then we can make a control of the first moto. Uh, we take a good return and uh, we need the points. Yeah, we, we lost the points in Estonia and now we are there. I think on by the contact of the points and I think we have to make a second race, second moto same and uh, take a whole shot and we will see. Hope the best. Good Hermans. Well, he was the quickest in time training and he was certainly very, very quick in that one. Just needs to get the gate better. Everyone very focused again ahead of race two. And uh, the sand digging out some of these corners now, big sandy berms, make it very difficult. I can tell you that 16 point gap is now seven. Etienne Bax trails Kurt Varick by seven points. Race two coming up. Well, seven points then. It's uh, not insurmountable. Jason Van, Van Dahl are there at the back, 7-2-3. But second row start here is going to be impossible for anyone to do anything from the second row. It's such a short run to that first left-hander. The eyes are down, dumps a clutch at your backs and away he goes. Van Lukela is on the right-hand side now. Who's got this one? That was again Justin Kuban, but he's in a red shirt this time, but no, Van Lukener, Van Lukener from Hermans, Justin Kuban, then it's Lucas Journey, the red and white, the other man, Marvin Van Lukener, Robbie Bax, number two, down the bottom, where, where, where is Etienne, Etienne Bax is there, behind Gert Van Verven in the yellow strip, oh goodness me, what a schmozzle, are there any big names in there? Uh, Tom van der Lagermat, number 99. The Prunier brothers are in there, number 94. So they've got work to do. The French champions, newly crowned last weekend, but the rest of them are locked together. I can't see any other big names, but it's going to be hopeless to pass on this track from the back. You're going to have to make the best of a bad job. Number 19 moving away there. That's Sven Visselink and Jens Vincent. But they're going to have to try hard to catch up. Marvin van Lukener going through. Then Kuhn Hermans. Nicolas Mousset. What a class act the Frenchman is. World champion passenger, of course. And that's what you need if you're going to succeed at this sport. You need somebody in there who is totally dependable, totally brave. Look at Kurt van Verven. He's going. There's Justin Kuban. Now Etienne Bax. Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak in what looks to be like fifth place. I correct that. It's now, I think, no, it's not. It's still fifth place. I thought he was going through on the inside, but there was no room. 
Bax knows that he's... Goodness me, he's throwing caution to the wind here. He really wants this. Where's Varick? All, all Varick has got to do is keep Etienne Bax inside. That's Kuban. Kuban and Dion Reitman, number seven hand in the air. So their race appears to be over, but you never know. We never say never in this game. These are long races, 30 minutes plus two laps. Bax and Chermak. Coming through this journey, there's Tim Leffering. There, the red plate of Varick. Varick behind Tim Leffering. And I can tell you, the reason he was going slowly in the first race was a broken rear brake pedal. And that will account for his speed downhill. Most of them go downhill, lock up the back, throw it in. And without a back brake pedal, then you've got to be careful going down the hill because you're in danger of running on into the deep stuff at the bottom. What can Varick do from what looks like about eighth place? We're at the front. Marvin Van Lucan, number two. Here comes Coon Hermans. Hermans through on the inside. Is he going to make this stick? Yeah, cuts across the front of the 2018 world champion. Take that, buddy. Hermans has never won the world championship, but he has finished second. He so dearly wants it. This won't be his year, of course, but he can at least elevate himself to fourth place in the standings, just as Van Lukener can get himself into third place in the standings, except there's one very big Dutchman in the way in the shape of Gert van Verven. Van Lukener now then, firmly in second. Where is Etienne Bax? Who was that in the red shirt coming down the hill? Was that Bax? Van Lukener, control at the front. This one is looking good for Marvin Van Lukener and Robbie Bax. The sun shining, they've got a clear track and... Hang on! Was that Hermans or was that Prunier in front of them? Are they coming up behind the French boys? Oh, no, that's Herm... So Hermans somehow got in front and now he's behind again. So that all happened behind the trees where... We don't have a camera there, so we missed it. But what a fantastic scrap this is. Kuhn Hermans was second, then he led. Now he's second again, Van Lukener back in front. Topsy-turvy this is, but it's Van Lukener in control. He's got to bring it all the way back to the chequered flag. And that chequered flag is not far away. Van Lukener then with a tail ender ahead of him. Here he goes, fist in the air. He knows he's done it. Job done, one more hill, then the chequered flag. And over they go, Van Lukener, Robbie Bax, victory in race two. And my sums tell me he is overall winner. Where is Kuhn Hermans? Kuhn Hermans, Nicola Musset, there they are, the white strip. Second place for them. Who gets third? Etienne Bax, Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak. And who is fourth? Well, it looks like Gert Van Verven. Where's Varick? Here comes Varick. Maybe, maybe Varick got fourth. I don't know. We'll soon see when I see the caption. How many points did Varick give away? Well, there you go. That's the overall result. Van Lukena overall winner. Etienne back second. Varick followed backs home in that race, so only dropped two more points. Van Verven fourth overall. Varick fifth. But it's the race result that counted for him. He still has the red plate, and he'll take that to Rudersburg for two more races. Kuhn Hermans, Nicola Mousset, third, climbing to the podium. Well, yeah, we uh, first uh, we went second with the start and then we passed uh, after some laps, uh, laps uh, for Luchene. And then uh, after some laps we make a mistake in the right corner, so uh, yeah, for Luchene passed us again and uh, yeah, it was not easy to follow him again, so uh, yeah, we are second and uh, yeah, we are still happy about the speed of today. Etienne Bax and Andre Chermak in front of Chermak's home crowd. They'll be delighted with that, and they're closing in ahead of Rudersburg for two more races. Well, you know, we always go for the win, so uh, we did not take the win. Unfortunately, we had a bad start. We, we touched some people in the start, I think, and it uh, was unfortunate, but uh, we had a good day. We came, we came uh, 11 points closer to the lead, so uh, only five points to go, so it will be an exciting race in Rutersberg. Top step of the podium, Marvin van Luken and Robbie back. Smiles all round. Uh, some very impressive trophies here in complete, so I must say. Martin Boehner, the promoter, handing out the goodies. But overall winners, Van Luken are backs. I'm so happy. We make a halfway the race, a small mistake. 
and Kuhn can uh, pass it, but he did just the same. He made also uh, a little mistake, so we can pass him back. And uh, yeah, we can uh, take the lead and uh, finish first and uh, overall win. Varek and Larry Kunas take the red plate to Rudersburg in Germany. Well, there it is. Five points the gap between Varek and Etienne Bax. Bax then has got it all to do in Germany. Van Lukener just 27 off, so he's not out of it either. They're all in with a shout. Hermans has done himself a power of good, closing up. What a brilliant, brilliant Grand Prix we've had here in Kaplica. And what a ride by Justin Kuban and Dion Riedman. Fantastic. Two more races, 50 more points, up for grabs still in two weeks' time in Rudersburg in Germany. We all look forward to that. It's been absolutely brilliant here in the Czech Republic. The motocross track, the weather, the crowds, the atmosphere, fantastic. Can't wait in two weeks' time. From me, Barry Nuckley, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Follow us, check out www.fimcyclecross.com for all the news as it happens. Stay in touch. There's one more thing for me to say before we go. Let's have a big shout out for all the marshals, all the officials, all the medics, all the people around the world who give up their free time to help motorcycle sport through. Without them, we could not race. Without them, there would be no sport. So hats off to all you volunteers, all you club members. Just keep doing it. We love what you do. That's it then. We'll see you from Germany. and is 10 times the world champion. Bax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukener certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.